Okay, so I have this problem, which is when people ask me what I do for a living and I say that I'm making art, there's uh, this notion that an artist is a solitary genius, somebody that, that's misunderstood working alone in an attic, fighting society. And, uh, and I think we really need to fight against this. And I would argue that art is really like a laboratory, that artistic practice is a form of research, like a company has an R&D department, that art making is like R&D. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the art and then about how we, we work together and collaborate. We make different projects. This is a project called IQ Font, which was made with a stunt driver. Um, I wrote software that, uh, that turned the movements of the, the car into a typeface that you can download. Um, so we do all these kind of weird, strange collaborations. This was a, a project called Night Lights, where we took the movements and gestures of people's bodies and, and amplified them on the building, creating the situation where passerbys could become performers and, and actually perform their silhouettes on, on, on a building. But a project that's really dear to my heart is a collaboration with, with many people, um, members of the Open Frameworks community, the Graffiti Research Lab, and, and especially this guy on the left side, um, Tempt. And Tempt is a, a graffiti artist from LA, and he is an old school legend, uh, a legend from the 80s and 90s in um, South Cal and North Cal, um, graffiti legend. And he, he was diagnosed seven years ago with Lou Gehrig's disease, which is a disease that attacks your body. So seven years ago, he was walking down the street and fell over, and now he's completely paralyzed. So we went out to LA, we met him, we showed him the kind of work that we do, what our community is about. And we got to know Tony, we got to know his condition, um, and really get, get to, you know, a feel for, for how to work with him. So, Tempt has this device, and so he has this device that he can use, that he can type with. So he says, dude, my hardware is ghetto. But he could also be saying, dude, my hardware is expensive. These are commercial eye trackers that cost about fifteen or $20,000. And we've been developing an eye tracker which costs $50. And it's essentially pieces that you can buy on the streets. You know, I go to Canal Street and buy sunglasses and modify them. And the lower left, you can see our Kanye, uh, Kanye glasses. That didn't work very well. Um, <laughs> And, and we've also been designing software. So thinking about Tony's love of letter forms, his, the way he likes to communicate, and designing software that would allow Tony to express himself the way he used to on, on the walls or trains or just, just anywhere. So here's Tony using our system. And as you can see, it's a very primitive system. It's glasses that, that you wear. Um, and it's, it's essentially an, an eye tracking system that Tony uses by moving his eyes. And what he does with his eyes is that he plots points, and from points he makes lines, and from lines he makes letters, and from letters he makes words. And then once he's made a word, he can shade it, and add shadows, and add color, and add the kind of, the, the language of graffiti. And then when we had a system where Tony could draw, we said, what is the next step? And the next step was to actually go out on the streets and project what Tony is drawing. So Tony would be in the hospital drawing, and we would go out on the street and project live what the artwork that he was making. And then we would stream it back in so that Tony could make a drawing and then it would go live on the streets of LA on the side of a highway and we would stream it back into the hospital room so that Tony could see what he was doing. Tony said, that's the first time I've drawn anything since 2003. It feels like taking a breath after being held underwater for five minutes. And for me, I think that, you know, each one of us in this room, we have the things that make us who we are. And you know, to imagine what it would be like to lose that and then to get that back. And Tony is rocking these amazing letter forms now. So he's take our software and really pushed it. And uh, next week, so if you follow the iWriters, you can follow the iWriter on Twitter, we're gonna have a Kickstarter, which we're kicking off next week. Tony's drawing, and he's continuing to make these amazing letter forms. And next week, we're gonna start actually selling um, posters and T-shirts and, uh, and all kinds of great, great stuff that he's making. Um, and it's really beautiful to see all of the, the ways that he can express himself now. Um, we've even taken the, the, the data from his drawings and we've, we've hooked it up to a robot, a robotic arm. You can see the top left corner, that's our dream. Um. <laughs> and I'm teaching a class, so I teach at Parsons School of Design and this semester I've been teaching a class uh, with 12 amazing students, and we've been looking at the iWriter and really developing the 2.0 version, just trying to figure out new, new ways to expand the hardware and the software and, and develop it and push it further. The last slide I want to end with is this kid who, we, when we were out in LA, he was kind of hanging out with us, and here he's made his own iWriter. And I just want to suggest this as the power of 
art to inspire the next generation, um, this idea of, uh, that we really need to be collaborating and doing it with others.